and needed some coins to build that dream team you guys have always wanted, make sure to head on over to my sponsor, Buy Madden Coins. They have the cheapest, the quickest, and most reliable coins on the market right now. Head on over to Buy Madden Coins and use code Poodle at checkout for 20% off your order. Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's Poodle back with another Madden Ultimate Team video, guys. Today, I'm going to be going over the most overpowered players post the NFL 100 and Harvest promo. I did make this video like two weeks ago, and I did tell you guys that'd be the one before Harvest. But with all the new players dropped in Harvest, all the new players dropped from the NFL 100, obviously this list has dramatically changed. So I want to update you guys on the best players you want to be having right about now. God, you guys are asking me who should I be picking up, who should I get. So instead of individually just answering you guys and telling you guys, I don't know your team status, but I'm going to give you guys my top 10 list of the most overpowered players you need right now that are really just game changers and they really change the dynamic of the field when you have them on the field. I picked up most of these players and trust me, they're crazy good, they're difference makers. So I'm gonna give you guys all of these that you should be getting right now. Obviously, post blitz and the post Christmas, things are always changed, but this is the list for now. And hopefully you guys like the list, I just made it real quick before I started this video. Now, I do have a lot of these players, so I speak from experience. I'm not just saying these players because because I can. I have tried almost every player on this list. Some of them I just can't afford right now because I'm I'm a little broke right now. Obviously, I just spent a lot of coins after that whole shopping spree I went on. But hopefully this helps you guys out. Now, if you guys are into the channel, make sure to go down below, hit that subscribe button, turn that noti bell, come join the family, boys. We're, we're pretty close to 13K. We're grinding out there pretty quickly. So thank you guys for all the support as of late. And if you guys could so kindly go down below, smash that like button. Let's get 200 likes in this overpowered video. Hopefully, you guys can kill the like button. You guys have been crazy. Guys, I just want to let you guys know. I picked up on the fact that there's a loyal fan base that you guys, you guys are becoming a loyal fan base. You guys come out every day, no matter, no matter the video, no matter the title, no matter, no matter the content, you guys come out every day to support me and I appreciate that. I noticed the guys who like the video every day and come here every day, so I appreciate all of you, even on your Sundays. That, that was the cool one that even on the Sunday you guys could do all that, so I understand Sunday's a busy day for most people, but that's about it. Comment down below throughout the video as I say these players. Let me know your opinions on these players and who you think I should add to the list. I always like feedback on this. Now let's get into the video. So. So over to the auction block and show you guys the first guy. So this guy, I only put a 10 because obviously he's overpowered. He's not my choice if I had to pick, but he's definitely one of the cards that based on his ability that he can get, he's definitely up there. And that's going to be Jim Brown coming at number 10. Now, Jim Brown isn't my favorite of the NFL 100 running backs, but you have to look at his stats, right? He's at 92 speed, 91 excel, and then his 93 brake tackle, 90 truck, and 92 carry. That's what you're really looking at here. And it's not just so much the stats, it's the abilities. He can get, I believe it's bruiser and evasive or jukebox and he starts off with the wrecking ball ability so he's gonna you can't really tackle him on his first on the first tackle you're pretty much gonna get broken he's gonna be able to juke you out and he has bruises so he's gonna be able to stiff arm and truck through you so he's got probably the best abilities in the game it's just so it's just his speed and excel it doesn't really match up with everything else and his agility and elusiveness but other than that his abilities alone have to put him in the top 10 i personally is he isn't my favorite nfl 100 running back but for a lot of people he could be very very useful now coming at number nine is a guy that i actually want on my team but like i said i'm too i don't have enough coins I'm too broke right now to afford him but he just came out and he's really really good randall cunningham 93 overall he's got 88 speed 93 throw power 88 throw short 83 throw mid 80, 92 throw deep 88 throw under pressure 92 throw under run and 87 play action guys he would have been a top three option on the overpowered list if he had a better throw under pressure because he would have got dashing dead eye whatever it is a roaming dead eye i always figure which one is the good one but to get that he needed a higher throw under pressure to not get that so what he pretty much is in essence randall cunningham is a lamar jackson that can throw now you might think like the mid the middle accuracy doesn't add up but yeah but that's not what i'm that's not what i care about i care about that throw power because here's the issue right lamar jackson can't throw too well but that's okay because he can run but the thing is that I can't do timing routes. Like, out routes really are, they're hard to throw with him because he throws them so slow. You have to throw timing routes at a perfect time. Like, you can't even mess up a little bit. If you mess up the timing route slightly, he's going to get picked off because they're going to catch up. Uh, deep routes are almost impossible. So, you know those deep routes where the post is over the middle and he just gets past the safety? When I throw that, he throws it so slow that another guy can come across the field. It's not going to clear the field. I can't throw streaks. He underthrows them. So, that's really, it. Lamar Jackson's range of field is very limited. Now, if you compare him, if you guys think Lamar Jackson is good, which I think he is, He's got the 93 throw power. So powered up and chemed up, Cunningham's going to be able to get to like a 96 throw power. So that alone right there is going to make him one of the hardest throwing quarterbacks in the game, which is already great. It means I'm going to be able to throw bullets around the field. Powered up and chemed up, his short accuracy will hit above 90. So he's going to have the threshold for short. So his short's going to be great, which Lamar's is not. Medium accuracy, they both suck at. So I really don't concern myself with that. Then deep accuracy, he can actually throw deep balls. He's going to throw crisp deep balls. So that's already another benefit of having Randall Cunningham. Throw under pressure, they both can't get the abilities, but they'll both get above 90, so I'm not concerned. Throw on the runs, obviously better with Cunningham. And the play action, I really don't care about. Now, if we come over to the juke and spin, 
honestly i haven't really checked these stats out yet to be honest with you but i imagine they're pretty good yeah juke and spin not as good as lamar but again i don't really like to juke with lamar that just gets me that, that causes fumbles i just like to do stop and goes and i i bait people into tackles i think that's the smarter way to play with quarterbacks you really don't want to actually take a hit or risk taking a hit but that alone, I think Randall Cunningham is the best quarterback in the game right now, or at least up there for one of the best, which his price surely, you know, surely correlates right there. Now, next on this list, another guy that I just picked up. I think he should be somewhere. Oh, no, you actually can't buy him. So I don't to compare him. I have him on my team, though. So let me get to Ed Tall Jones and compare him. I got a number eight left end Joey Bosa. Now, Joey Bosa, his block shit might not be great, right? But he has three things here that stand out among almost every other pass rusher. 81 speed, 87 excel. He's going to be dominant when it comes to chasing down people. First off, when he when he gets passed on a scrimmage, he has a 97 finesse move. When I put the right cams on him and I put on John Madden pass rush, he's going to have a 99 finesse move. No other card in the game, unless they're like on a theme team or something, no other card stock like this with just a few cams is going to get 99 finesse move right now. So Joey Bo is going to be probably the best pass rushing card in the game. Combined with that speed, the second he gets passed, if you put on finesse specialist, and the second he gets past the tackle, that quarterback's getting chased, and he's going to get chased fast. You're gonna have minimal time to think. If they don't have a scrambling quarterback, they're screwed. The only chance you have of escaping Bosa is going to be escape artist, and even then, usually with escape artist, if you reverse like a 75 speed end, you can at least outrun them enough to stand still and then throw a pass. You know, you can get away from them in the pocket and then throw a pass, but with Bosa, he's too fast. You're not really gonna be able to get away. You're gonna be able to just not get tackled, which pretty much means he's gonna be up your ass the whole time. So you're gonna have to either throw on the run or throw it away, or just, just, just scramble and take, take a hit because Bosa's too fast. That's kind of the benefit of him. I know he's not the best block shutter, but I have not really felt it just yet. Although I know there's probably going to be some games where I'll end up feeling the um, the lack of block shed, but it's okay. I think it's more than worth it. Next on the list, still making this list is Aaron Donald. Obviously, Aaron Donald compared to his 90. The 90 is still great. I have no problem with my 90, but this other Aaron Donald is just different. The strength's going to be way better. The speed and acceleration is way better. The tackling is close. The play rec is close. The block shit's close. The pass rushing stats and the block shedding stats are almost the same, but it's, you're really paying for the athleticism, the, the extra strength, and the ability he's going to be able to get. This Aaron Donald's a monster. He's going to be one of the best run ends in the game right now, and I want him, but I'm waiting for his redux price to keep coming down and for me to get more coins, obviously. I do pretty much play no money spent, so I think coins are going to be hard for quite a while. I'm really going to feel the lack of coins for just a little bit. Now, next is going to be a wide receiver coming in at number six. Now, he would have been higher, but so many great cards just came out, and it's not Donald Driver. It is Tyreek Hill. Tyreek Hill with 95 speed is all you got to hear. 95 speed. That's, that's just it. That's a difference maker right there. 90 jumping and then 91 deep route running. So this card's going to all over the field make plays. And the best thing about Tyreek Hill is you don't have to actually care about what the routes he runs. You just need to, you get him in open space. You're not throwing him contested routes. He's not, he's not route running. You, you want him in open space. I throw him drags. Pretty much one of my one of my game plans is that on certain drives, I just always put Tyreek Hill in a drag. If they play up a little bit, I toss it to him in the, in the backfield right there. And he gets, what does he have? He has change of direction on. So the second he catches it, he becomes like a human joystick for a second when he first catches it. I don't know if that prolongs throughout the, the rest of the play, but I know initially he can just make any cut off the catch. So I usually get, I get a drag, I cut it right up field, easy eight to 10 yard gain. And if I'm lucky, sometimes I break it all the way. I run deep post with him. He's gonna break that for like 50, 60 yards. That speed is just different. You can't really compete with 95 speed right now. That's way too fast for the majority of defenses. And he can get return man, which I have on him. And so he's a stud on kick return. There's just so many good things about Tyree Kill that can't be discounted. That's why he has to be up at least in the top six. Although he would have been higher depending on the circumstances, but too many cards just got dropped. Next on the list coming at number five is Deion Sanders. Now Deion Sanders, I have him fully powered up here as you guys can see. He's got 93 speed, 93 excel, 93 agility, 90 jumping, 90 play rec, 93 man, 90, 81 zone, I mean 91 zone, and 78 press. Minus the press, this card is overpowered. He's super athletic. He gets tons of crazy picks. He always reacts in the zone. And the second he gets a pick, the beauty of him is like when they say like defense is the best offense, I literally sometimes don't even have to play offense because if Deion Sanders gets a pick and I also have tonight trailer on the other side, they're so athletic that if they catch a pick, I'm probably taking it back at least into the other red zone at minimum, right? Like I'm, I'm maybe I don't score every time, but I'll at least at minimum take it back most of the way. He's so, he's so agile. There's so many great things about him and his jumping, all that stuff. He's just so athletic. I love Deion Sanders. And then he could also return kicks for me, which he does. He used to, but now I have Tyreek Hill there. But I imagine for a lot of teams, he could return kicks for. 
Now, next on the list, actually, same spot. Nitro Lane's gonna be number four. Now, the only reason I put him above Deion Sanders is because of the, of course, gonna lag. The only reason I put him above Deion Sanders is because of the press. The press is a huge difference with Nitro Lane because I'm actually able to press up on receivers and literally clamp them up. Like when I blitz and I, I press the, the number one receiver, Nitro Lane holds them there for quite a while. And he might get burned here and there, but he can hold them so that on certain blitzes, if you're looking for that burn route and you're waiting and you're waiting, because you, that's, that's pretty much what people do. When you, when you press up on them on a blitz, they instantly streak their receiver and they just look downfield the whole time and wait, which is a, a recipe to get sacked, especially if he presses him for like two to three seconds. If you can get it for almost that long, the, the sack's there. It's pretty much guaranteed. Obviously, you're going to get burnt here and there, but I think more than likely he's going to hold the press. He's got 92 speed, 92 excel, 93 agility, 94 jumping, 90 play rick, 89 man, 94 zone, 91 press. With lockdown and everything in all his camps, he does hit every single threshold in the game that you need for a cornerback. On top of that, he's got speed and he's got a 91 hit power, which the 91 hit power is great because he can lay the boom on running backs and especially receivers who try to juke you out. Other cornerbacks like Deion, if you get juked out, it's whatever, it won't cause anything, but you try to juke out Nitro and Lane, he hits you. More than likely, it's going to be a fumble. So that's kind of one of the benefits of having him. Now, coming at number three is a wide receiver that also just recently came out, and I'm going to have to use him to compare to, which would be a little easier. That is Michael Irvin. Now, Michael Irvin, this is what he looks like fully powered up. He's got 93 speed, 94 jumping, 91 catching, 93 catching traffic, 93 spec catch, 92 short route running, 89 medium route running, and 91 deep route running. Now, remember, on a team with John Madden passing or go deep or anything else, his stats increase tremendously. He has all mid to high 90 catching stats. He's got great jumping, great speed for a guy that you think would be more of like a possession receiver. He's got a great juke, a great spin, a great break tackle, great stiff arm. This guy as a whole is just a monster. The playmaker, he's amazing. I highly recommend you guys scoop him up. I think him and Tyreek Hill are perfect compliments to each other. Michael Irvin runs all the routes and can catch and he could be the big receiver for you. And then Tyreek Hill's the speedy guy. And they're both really fast. So it's not like just one's only fast. Michael Irvin's an incredible card. Highly recommend. That's number three. Now, number one and two, pretty obvious. They both just came out in the game like two or three days ago. It's two of the NFL 100 running backs. Now, there's a heavy debate, guys. These one and two are interchangeable. I'm not going to tell you to stick to one because obviously people have different opinions. Now, Eric Dickerson, I'm going to put it at number two. Now, I know that's preference. I'm just, maybe I'm biased, but I'm going to, the number one and two right here, it's Eric Dickerson and Barry Sanders. These are my one and two. Now, I put Barry at one. Now, when you compare them, obviously, Eric Dickerson isn't powered up, so it's going to be hard to do this comparison. But let me show you guys Eric Dickerson's stock. He has 93 speed, 92 excel, 92 agility, 93 carry, 67 catching, 86 elusiveness, 91 trucking, 91 break tackle. Now, what he has over Barry is the strength and the trucking. That's about it. He has strength, trucking, and carrying. I'll give him that. He's going to be an incredible carrier. He's not going to fumble too often. He's going to be great at trucking. But I'm not a big trucker, so I don't really care. What I see him as is a better carrier and better strength. And he gets a better X factor when he starts with his freight train. So I think Eric Dixon is number two. His speed is going to be similar to Barry Sanders, if not the same. But the acceleration is the big difference. Barry Sanders has quite a bit more of acceleration. That's going to be a, it's going to be game changer because for my my opinion speed is great, right? I used to overrate speed. It's not so much about speed anymore in this game. It's, it's about acceleration now. Because how you quickly even get out of the backfield and get away from everyone's abilities is your best bet. See, if your guy has bad acceleration, he's not going to feel fast in the backfield. And feeling fast in the backfield is what makes plays, right? If you if you look if you give Eric Dixon a 99 speed with 88 excel, He'll never hit 99 speed because for that, he'd have to get out of the backfield to get past line of scrimmage. And then when he hits a straight line, then he feels speed. So Barry Sanders and Eric Dickerson's speed is really only shown when they hit the open field and they're running straight or, or you're outrunning someone. Other than that, the acceleration is what really matters off cuts because you're going to do jukes in the backfield, cuts. All that is how quickly you can accelerate back to your speed. So Barry's going to always feel like he's running at full speed with that kind of excel, especially since his excel is higher than his speed. Eric Dickerson, that's not really the case. And then obviously Eric Dickerson's a better carrier, better trucker, but I love the fact that he has all that acceleration, all that speed, all that agility, all that elusiveness, that break tackle. Barry Sanders is going to feel, he's going to be glitchy. Obviously he's going to fumble a little bit. Powered up and chemmed up, he does have a 90 fumble in my team. I mean a 90 carry, but he does fumble a bit. I'm not, I'm going to give him that. He can fumble, but the plays he can make are just crazy. And I like the fact that at any given moment, Barry could take it all the way to the house. Eric Dickerson can too, but I feel a lot more confident with Barry. And it just feels more fun to use Barry. It feels like I'm literally playing with the human joystick. But that is about it for the video. Hope you guys did enjoy this list. If you have any feedback, commentary, any kind of things you want to recommend, comment it down below in the video. Hit me up on Twitter if you guys have any direct advice you guys need on these cards. That is about it. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Turn that noti bell. Don't forget to comment down below. And if you're still here this long, make sure to like the video. Best way to show support is always liking the video. So if you guys are here, smash that like button. Thank you guys for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day. I'm out. See you guys next video. Peace.